Every so often, I get a slightly panicked text or WhatsApp, and it contains photos like this, and this, and this, from clients or friends who keep sheep and goats. Inevitably, the question follows, what is it and how on earth do I treat it? Most people guess worms and they would be right. They're tapeworms. Now, tapeworms or cestodes are one of the big categories of worms that infect sheep. The others are the trematodes or the flukes. And then there are the nematodes or the roundworms. Those would include your things like homonchus, nematodirus, the common gut worms of sheep that can cause ill thrift and diarrhea or scour. Now, Tapeworms have a slightly more complex life cycle than nematodes or the roundworms. Those roundworms, the life cycle of which I'll put up now, have a very simple life cycle in which they transfer between the sheep and the environment and back to the sheep. In contrast, tapeworms cycle between two different hosts. One of these hosts is known as the definitive host and that is the host in which you will find the adult form of the parasite and another host is called the intermediate host because that's where you find the intermediate or larval stages of the parasite. Using a non-tapeworm example, liver fluke also uses a definitive and an intermediate host. The definitive hosts including cattle and sheep whereas the intermediate host is the mud snail which we've talked about in a previous video. Coming back to tapeworms, there are a number of different species of tapeworm and one uses the sheep as a definitive host, i.e. you find the adult tapeworm in it, while the others use sheep as an intermediate host, i.e. you find the intermediate forms in the sheep. Going back to those photos we saw at the start, those are little segments of the adult tapeworm. Now they can look very impressive and certainly the entire adult tapeworm, if you were to ever come across one being shed, they look really impressive, really dramatic. And so people often get panicked, they often worry, what on earth is this doing to my sheep or goats? Now, although they look very dramatic, the effects they seem to have on sheep health and productivity seem to be more or less negligible. So this one species of tapeworm that uses the sheep as a definitive host, known as Menesia expansa, don't need to remember that, seems to be relatively benign. Certainly when sheep are infected experimentally with this tapeworm, it doesn't seem to affect their health or growth. And likewise, when sheep that are known to be infected are experimentally treated, it doesn't seem to improve their health or growth at all. If you were to treat for them, white wormers generally do the job, but do you need to treat? That's the more important question. That is a conversation to have with your vet. Now, what's of greater concern is those species of tapeworm that use the sheep as the intermediate host. That means they form the larval stages and for tapeworms, that larval stage is a cyst. Now a cyst is a general capsule term for a, a fluid filled structure. Depending on the different species of tapeworm, and there are several, these cysts will form at different sites around the body. They can form in the brain, causing a neurological disease known as GID. They can form in the muscle, they can form free floating in the abdomen, and they can form in the liver. For example, I'll put on some images now of a tapeworm cyst I found coincidentally on a post-mortem last year. Now, like I said, if they form in the brain, that can cause neurological disease. If they form in the muscle on the liver, that can cause total or partial carcass condemnation. That means when you get your kill sheet back from the abattoir, you'll see you'll have deductions because they've had to chop out bits of the carcass that are infected with these cysts. So those species of tapeworm that cause the intermediate or cyst forms of the disease to form in sheep are probably more significant and of more interest than the species that live as adults in sheep. Now, for all of those species which use the sheep as an intermediate host, the definitive host are canids, that means dogs essentially, and to a much lesser extent, foxes. So these are the animals we should focus our control attempts on. First things first, all farm dogs, not just collies, spaniels, labradors, pugs, anything on the farm should be wormed every six to eight weeks with a praziquantel based worm. And that means it, it is active against tapeworms, not just the roundworms of dogs. Likewise, you should really limit those dogs access to sheep carcasses and sheep offal because it's when those dogs get access to the cysts that they themselves become infected. The elephant in the room, of course, especially in countries like the UK, where we have a lot of public access of farmland is that lots of people who are visiting the farm 
probably aren't treating their dog every six to eight weeks for tapeworm and they're probably unaware of the risks their dogs pose to the sheep. So there's no easy answer. Fencing off rights of way where you can, encouraging people to pick up after their dogs and also putting up signs just to educate them on the dangers that dog feces can pose to livestock. It's not easy and we'll probably never eliminate it, but at least we can try. That's it, nice and short and sweet. If you liked it, press like. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing now. The button's just down here and leave me some feedback in the comments. Cheers.